Hello and good evening. Thank you for being here. Today I'm going to be talking about the guardians of your inner galaxy and I come here bearing a note from them that says, get to know me, maybe. My name is Danielle Chum and I'm a graduate student who studies the immune system and how it behaves in cancer. Through my studies and my research, I have come to appreciate how exquisitely fascinating and interesting the immune system is. But whenever I called my family to complain about a roadblock I had run into in my research, they would, I was not getting the appropriate amount of empathy from them. They would halt my complaints by asking, what's that and what's that? Basically ruining the complaining. It was then that I came to realize that my family, even though they understood my enthusiasm for the immune system, they didn't understand the inner frustrations of it. And they, like you and me, knew they had an immune system, but how it worked, they weren't so clear. They knew that it was because of their immune system, it was why they did not get sick, it was why they got vaccinated, it's why they did not drop dead when they went to new places. But as to how it works and the players that make it so, that wasn't so clear. So coming from this angle, I conducted a super scientific experiment using Facebook, you see? I asked my friends what they wanted to know about the immune system and the questions I got were quite interesting and could be grouped into three questions. How does the immune system work? Why is it so boring to learn about? And does the immune system actually explode things? That was my favorite question. So where do we start from? The beginning, of course. Every cell in our body, including the cells of our immune system, arise from a stem cell. And I'm sure you've heard the term thrown about in the popular media. You see, a stem cell is actually fascinating because it has been able to crack the fountain of youth. It is able to divide and still keep its youthful, refreshed state, unlike other cells of our bodies. This makes it self-renewing. And the other fascinating thing about the stem cell is that it's able to become anything it wants to be. Yes, get jealous. So this multipotent ability of stem cells makes them the origin of every cell of our body, including, and most importantly, our immune system cells. So literally, one stem cell to rule them all. Thank you, stem cell. So then from one stem cell arises all the cells of our immune system, and the immune system can be broken apart into two groups, the innate immune response and the adaptive immune response. I like to think of them as two arms. Sometimes you need one, and if the burden is too heavy, you use the other. The innate and the adaptive immune system complement each other like a perfectly made croissant and an exquisite omelet. Yes, those in the audience know I love croissants. Uh, together, I mean separate, they are all right. I mean, a croissant is all right, but when you put them together, they're magical. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Even though the innate and the adaptive immune arms complement each other, they're still separate. And one of the main differences between the innate and the adaptive immune arms is that of time. The innate immune system works really quickly, usually within minutes and hours. However, the adaptive immune system takes a little bit of time to get into the game. And you know, we'll learn later why sometimes it's good to be fashionably late. The second difference between the innate and the adaptive immune arm is that the innate immune system is very exclusive. Its cells haven't changed. And you can think of it as a hoity-toity club whose members haven't changed for eons. The adaptive immune response, the arm in, 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 in contrast, is able to suit and adapt itself as its name suggests. And then lastly, when it comes to that of memory, which is, that, which is what separates the innate and the adaptive immune arms, the innate immune system has no memory whatsoever. It cannot remember that it's ever met something bad and every encounter is a new encounter. However, the adaptive immune arm is able to create memory so that if it's met something that it's seen before, it's able to quickly get rid of it. So where do explosions happen in the immune system? Let's go for a super dramatic thing. You're chopping onions and you cut your finger. Yes, I like that. What happens? What have you done? What you've done is that you've broken your first line of defense between you and everything that's outside, your skin. So this allows any floating dust bunny, the juice from the onions, bacteria, viruses, just chilling in your house, getting in there. And for the, for the purpose of this talk, we're gonna call all these things pathogens and they're the tiny, gorgeous green things over there. 
So these pathogens get into your system, and this break-in on your, in your skin is picked up by gorgeous cells sunbathing right beneath the surface of your, sink, of your skin, and these cells are generally part of the innate adaptive immune response. The first responders to the break-in are neutrophils. Now, neutrophils are part of a group of cells called granulocytes, and I like to call them the grainy ones because that's actually what they look like under the microscope. Now, the grainy things they have are actually called granules, and when neutrophils move to the pathogen, they're able to pop these granules out of their systems and singe the nasty pathogens and actually kill them. But pathogens are evil, we all know that, and they're able to divide and replicate very quickly, and this burst of activity leads the neutrophils to realize we cannot control this by ourselves, let's call for help. So then this brings in the big guns, dendritic cells and macrophages. Dendritic cells and macrophages are known as antigen-presenting cells. And an antigen is anything that elicits the production of antibodies. Oh, we'll get there very soon. So dendritic cells and macrophages come in and start to gobble up stuff that is not you, that is around the site of insult, which is the cut. Now you might wonder, how do your cells see that this is an outsider and this is you? Oh, they have like heat sensors and they're able to recognize that. No, that's actually a joke. That's not true. But, so the reason why your innate immune cells are able to recognize that there's an outsider versus you is that your cells have distinct molecular signatures that identify them as belonging to you, and the pathogens also have their own distinct molecular signatures that identify them as belonging to them. Think of it like a dress code. The pathogens are not dressed like you, and the innate immune cells are the fashion police. Now, this burst of activity of innate, um, of innate immune cells just getting to the site of the insult, which is the cut, is facilitated by, like, fluid filling the area and also by the expansion of blood vessels and also because there's so many cells in there you start to heat up which is why if you've noticed when you cut your finger it starts to get swollen and then it starts to hurt and it heats up a little bit. Now as the, as the infection is getting out of control the pathogens are dividing the macrophages and dendritic cells are eating up these pathogens as quickly as possible and then chopping up chopping them up with these molecular knives they have inside of them, and then they leave the site of the insult and use cellular highways to reach your lymph nodes. Now, I'm sure you've all had your doctors feel right under your throat here looking for swelling in your lymph nodes, and this is because the swelling is indicative of the fact that macrophages and dendritic cells have come to the lymph node to present their antigen presence to, you guessed it, the cells of the adaptive immune response. Now, in the lymph node, you have B and T cells, which are the founding members of the adaptive immune response. Now, if the dendritic cells uh, or macrophages don't come to the lymph node and tell the B and T cells that, hey, listen, there's an intruder somewhere in the skin, the B and T cells cannot know. As such, without an adequate and robust innate immune response, your adaptive immune response will be very lacking. So the dendritic cell gets to the lymph node and it says, hey, coming through, I've got something on my little tray here. You want to check it out? And what it needs to do is that it needs help to disseminate the information that there is an intruder around and we need help getting rid of it. So what does it do? It finds a T helper cell. So the dendritic cell says to the T helper cell, look what I found up there. And the T cell goes, hey, let me add it. And they, have, they come together and have a very quaint conversation known as an immunological synapse. And it involves exchange of information about this pathogen. And the T helper cell develops amazing powers of division and it divides into worker helper cells and helper memory cells. Now the helper worker cells that are made from this interaction are specific to this antigen that the dendritic cell showed to it. So this helper cell then moves to the outer edges of the lymph node where B cells live in these beautiful circular structures known as B cell follicles. And even though B cells live on the outer edges of town, sometimes they are in the know that there's something going on because you have this fluid in your body called the lymph fluid that is able to drop, you know, information, little bits of information that says, hey, there might be something going on. But as I said before, if your T helper cell does, if your innate immune response doesn't tell the adaptive immune response that something bad is happening, it's not an adequately robust response. So the helper T cell comes to the B cell and says, hey, look what I've become. They have an exchange of information. 
and the helper cell helps the B cell. And then the B cell divides into these giant antibody producing factories known as plasma cells and also memory cells. Now the final act in the lymph node occurs when dendritic cells present their antigens to the killer CD8 T cells. In my head, I always think dendritic cells are shaking a little bit in their toes when, when they try to present to these guys because once you get these dragons into the show, it's really about to go down. So then the dendritic cell comes to the T cell, the killer cell, and says, I was asked to let you know about an intruder. Hey, I'm just doing my job. And the T cell goes, oh goodness, we have a problem. And so, <laughs> so then once again, they come together, exchange information regarding this intruder, and then the killer cells divide into, I like to think of dragon cells, because they, they breathe fire and they cause a lot of mayhem. And then you have the memory cells. So now you have a click of B cells and killer cells coming to the site of the insult, and you have B cells throwing anti antibodies at the pathogens, like spears trying to neutralize them. And then you have the killer cells coming in, fire-breathing dragons, and the arrival of the adaptive immune cells just sets everything on fire. <laughs> I told you they created mayhem. But the beauty of the immune system is that if it sets a fire, it's able to self-regulate. So then you have peacekeeping cells in the form of peacekeeping macrophages and, and, and T cells that come in and try to put out the fire, like, you know, like trying to put out a fire with a ton of water. And they do this by producing a ton of anti-inflammatory substances, as their name suggests, because they calm down the inflammation. So now, of course, your skin needs to be stitched together, and there are cells that do that, and some of them belong to your immune, immune system, and they stitch everything together, and then your cells are just chilling, sitting there for another day discussing, you know, what cells discuss. Hey, how does your cytoplasm look like today? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> but you and me, we're human. We're, we're definitely going to cut our hand again. I mean... Once you're chopping onions, you get distracted and you sing a really good Bon Jovi song or something. But the beauty of the immune system is that, if you recall, as it was creating the immune response, it was creating memory cells. And that's where your memory cells come in, in that your memory cells go back to the mother load, which is the bone marrow, which is where all stem cells reside. And these memory cells reside as guardians that are all-knowing. Well, all-knowing to the pathogen that they helped eliminate. But they're kind of all-knowing in that they can help eliminate a pathogen that they've seen before or a pathogen that even looks like something they've seen before. And parts of your body have a direct line to this repository of guardians so that if you are ever in contact the pathogen that, is, that wants to just wreck your life or make, make your summer vacation horrible, your body can call on them really quickly and just annihilate it very quickly so that you can go ahead and go sunbathe right by the beach. So I come here bearing a note from your immune system and they wanted me to let you know that they've got this. Thank you.